God, my Lord, and I thy son. I have been greatly unjust to myself, and I confess my faults. So grant me protection against all my faults, for none grants protection against faults. Guide me to the best of morals, but none guides to the best of morals. But thee. turn from me the evil and the indecent morals, but none can turn from me the evil and the indecent morals. But thee. oh, Allah, make Muhammad successful and the true and righteous followers of Muhammad successful, as thou did make Abraham successful and the true and righteous followers of Abraham successful. Do Allah bless Muhammad and the true and righteous followers of Muhammad, as thou did bless Abraham and the true and righteous followers of Abraham. For surely thou art praised and magnified, thou mayest forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, you may be seated. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. I greet my brothers and sisters with the green words of peace of Aslam Alaikum. How are my brothers and sisters feeling this afternoon? Wow. I am bound by Allah's permission. Uh, brothers and sisters, on behalf of the Western Regional Representative for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, our brother, Brother Minister Tony Muhammad, I'd like to welcome you out to Muhammad's Miles number 27. Why don't you give yourself a hand for coming out this afternoon to this right Brother or sister that is out for the very first time that have never been out to Muhammad's Mosque number 27 before. Let's see a show of hands. Raise them high. All, all praise to you for that. Brother sister, we thank you for your presence. Um, for those of you who are out for the very first time, you may be somewhat unfamiliar with our checking procedure. We want to ensure that no one has brought any sort of weapon or any sort of contraband into the meeting. We don't want you to have to worry about having somebody have something in, in their possession that might harm themselves or might harm you. So we check everybody that comes through the doors to ensure that we have a safe environment and a peaceful environment. Because we know in, in a peaceful environment, in a safe environment, you're, you're, you're more open to hearing words that can have a, a, uh, make a difference in your life. We separate our brothers and we separate our sisters, but we in unity. But we don't want you to have no distractions. We know that these are the life giving teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, and we want you to hear every word coming from this rock. We want you to weigh this word against everything you've been taught. Whatever you may have been taught, some of you might have been going, might have gone to colleges and universities. You may have gone to this church or that church or wherever you may. Whatever you know up to this point, we want you to weigh this truth against what you've been taught. We know that these are the life giving teaching of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, so we don't want you to have any distractions. We want you to feel at home. You know, you are at home right now. You're amongst family. These are your brothers and your sisters. And if you haven't greeted your brothers and your sisters, matter of fact, let's take a moment right now. Everybody just look to the left and look to the right. Greet your brother. Greet your sister. With a smile. Don't frown. Smile. You're at home. You're amongst family. And by Allah's permission, you know me. Anytime you have an opportunity to hear truth, that's a blessing. I mean, there's a lot of our brothers and sisters out there haven't had the opportunity to hear truth, so we should all have a smile on our face. Those of us who had an opportunity to come in here this afternoon, you should all have a smile on your face. So, brothers and sisters, we thank you for coming out. We want you to relax. We want you to open up your heart, open up your mind. We want you to remove whatever you might have going on in your head. If you got some bills you have to pay, just forget about that. Two hours from now, three hours from now, the bill is still going to be due. So don't worry about it. Whatever is on your head right now, just put it to the side for a second. And as the teachers used to tell me when I was in elementary school, they said, put on your thinking cap. We want you to begin to think today. Because we're in a very, very critical time, brothers and sisters. But we're in a great time. Is that right? But we got a man standing before us in the person of the most honorable minister, Louis Farrakhan, is bearing witness to the truth. He's standing on this truth. And he's taking on all comers, all opposition that comes at him. He's, he's facing. He's standing up for you and I. Right. Those of us that have not accepted this truth yet are, are, are may not be walking, you know, ready to stand up. He's standing up for you and I. Right. Taking on whatever opposition comes. So we're in a blessed day. Right. So we, you know, we, we, we got something to smile about. The black man and woman, boy, we, we need something to smile about this day. Is that right? I mean, when you look around and you look at the condition of our people, I mean, it, it, it can literally make you cry, but to have the opportunity to know that God is present today. God is here. I said God is present today. That will put a smile on your face. 
Because if you look at the album Minister Lewis Park, God, he, he is an example. He is a folk. He, he's bearing witness to the, to the fact that God is present right now. Is that right? I mean, he goes wherever he wants to go. Is that right? He says what he wants to say. Is that right? I mean, he don't worry about what, what the enemy got to say. Is that right? And that's a, that's a bold black man. We should all get behind that man. Is that right? All praise is due to a lot. So you should give yourselves another hand for turning out the way that you Say something that it just begin to wake you up. Because we got our brothers who are going to be coming to this roster that's going to be sharing some wisdom with you that you got to listen to. So I want to get out of the way because I want to listen myself. But I want you to greet your brother. You want to you want to show love to a brother that's standing on the side of truth. Is that right? I mean, don't you don't you love when you hear the truth and you love that brother or sister that's standing before you bringing that truth? So we got to show our appreciation. Is that right? So I'm going to bring up before you a hard driving soul. When I came to the doors, he was already here. He a hard driving. I mean, he's just always on point. When you look at him, you're just looking at a man that's disciplined. So I want you to show your love for our brother. I want to bring him before you without any further ado. Bring on our assistant minister to, the, to our brother, brother minister Tony Muhammad, brother minister Charles Muhammad. Bring him on one more time. One true and living God who came to us in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. And in the name of the exalted Christ, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And in the name of our standard bearer, our leader, our teacher, and our guide, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. It gives me a great privilege and honor to stand before you to extend the greeting words of peace in the Arabic language. Assalamu alaikum. Brothers and sisters, before we go any further, let us give Brother Minister Jason Muhammad, the Minister of Long Beach, a round of applause. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, we are in a great and a dreadful day, and we are anxiously awaiting the message that Brother Minister Tony Muhammad has for us from the mouth of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. He has a special message for us today. And I don't know about you, but I'm anxiously awaiting because, you know, we need guidance in these troubled times. Is that right? That's right. When you're in trouble, you need a guide to show you how to get out of that trouble. And as we have sojourned here in America for 442 years, and as we have gone through the ups and downs and trials and tribulations, as individuals, as families, as communities, and as a nation that God declared us to be, we find ourselves in perilous times. So we need guidance, is that right? Yes, sir. We need instruction. Yes, sir. We say sometimes that, you know, we don't want to take that instruction from another black man. But who else are you going to take it from? We've been taking instruction from white people for too long, is that right? That's right. So why not look into self and look at self. When I say self, I'm not only talking about an individual, but I am talking about what God declared us to be, and that is a nation. Yes, he came himself, as Bible teaches us. We believe in the Bible. Muslims, we believe in the Bible. We believe in Jesus. As we believe in all of those worthies of God, some of you may not think that the Muslims Believe in Jesus. We do believe in Jesus. In fact, we can't even be a Muslim unless we believe in Jesus. We believe in all the scriptures, all of the prophets that ever came, all of the revelation from God. Some prophets that are made known and some that we don't even know. You mean to tell me that there were no wise men that were raised up from the indigenous or what we know as the American Indian? There were no sages or wise men that were raised up on the continent of Asia. You know Confucius, you know Buddha, but was there any other wise men that were raised up? That you don't maybe know their names. Or women who maybe you don't know their names. We believe in all of them, whether we know their names or not. That 
that's what it takes to be a Muslim. A Muslim only means one who submits his or her will to do the will of God. Now, we were declared a nation. Black men and women in America were declared by God a nation within a nation. Now, you might say, well, brother, I'm not in the nation. I'm, I'm a Christian. That's fine. That's fine. I am too. But you are also a part of your own group, your own ideology, your own particular concerns as a people. That's what makes us a nation. Now, Christians are in the nation. Hebrews are in the nation. Nationalists are in the nation. You, every black man, woman, and child is in the nation of Islam. Now, you might say, well, I'm a Christian, brother. How can that be? The Honorable Louis Farrakhan told us Savior's Day, February the 26th, 1997. He said that we're all in the nation. But if you are a Christian, a Hebrew, a nationalist, that is just your pre personal preference of how you want to express your faith. The mosque, listen to me now, the mosque is designed as a uh, school for those who are qualifying for the post that God came to give us to set us on top of the world. Everybody can't go through this. Come to the mosque all the time. Every woman can't put the long garment on. You might not like that. You might not understand it either. Because you are blessed by God to be the most beautiful woman on the planet. So you want to show everybody. Well, God says, lower your garment here and cover yourself. And have a man uh, deal with you from the neck up. Huh? A checkup from the neck up. When before we have been checking you out by the curvature of your hips and how fine you are. And sister, you are fine. So how can a black man, how can a natural man, how can a natural man build a civilization or a nation looking at you, sister, you so fine and you undressed? How can we? You have the power to change a man's mind. You, the female, have the power to change a man's mind. I don't care if you're reading the word of God. And you pass by with your fine self. You have the power to make him close the book up, put it down, and look at you. You didn't know that. But you, beloved brothers and sisters, are in fact a nation. Now when we say the nation of Islam, Islam only means peace that comes through submission to the will of God. Peace that comes as a result of submitting and being obedient to God's will. Now, he said we were a nation. A nation. In a nation, you have many things. Is that right? You have education in a nation. Is that right? You got to have a military in the nation because whatever you develop and whatever you set up, if you don't have an army to protect it, somebody will come and take it. Is that right? So we are the nation of Islam, and inside the nation of Islam, you have the military arm, which is called the FOI. The FOI is the military training given to the men and boys who belong to Islam in North America. You have the MGT and GCC, Muslim Girl Training, and general civilization class. Because as black people coming from the psychological scars of slavery, we have not been 
given the science of how to build a home. So God came, raised up a man named Elijah. Elijah Muhammad taught him that he would have the arduous task of resurrecting the dead. Who was the dead? Come on. it out. Well, when you want to resurrect the dead, you have to go to the cemetery. Where's the cemetery? We live in the time of resurrection and in the time of judgment. But where's the cemetery? And where are those bodies that need to be resurrected? Come on. Come on. Good morning. 
to get a piece of the American dream. But let us examine the pie. Let us look at the pie. Do you still want a piece of the pie if it's filled with maggots? Or would you like the recipe to bake your own pie? Huh? What is wrong? With you and I building a nation of our own, we have tried to emulate and assimilate and do all we could to integrate with our enemy. But we have not been successful as a people. Now, you have what is called tokenism, where the white man, your opening, one that they ain't got no love. He ain't got no love for right. That's right. That's right. But yet we think that there, oh man, you mean to tell me I can't trust no white people? Man, I know some good ones. Yeah. See? Yeah. Why do you know any good black ones? Yeah. Yeah. You should be looking for the good in your brother and your sister. That's right. If there are some good white ones, I'm just not going to do that. But I will go out of my way to see the good in my brother and my sister because I know from the teaching of the Army Life Muhammad what has been done to you and I as, as a people. We have been robbed, deaf, dumb, and blind. Where it's easy for us to kill another black man and look like us. It's easy for us to rape a black woman who looks like our mother, looks like our sister, looks like our auntie. Huh? But when you come into the knowledge of yourself and realize that God gave you and I a gift, and now that it is time for the black man and woman to come up out of the grave, the grave of ignorance, the grave of self-hatred, the grave of being a liar and a thief, when we realize that and begin to not only hear the word, but begin to do the word, and then we come in unity under some direction, then and only then will we, will we uh, be able to rise up out of the graveyard of our community and do something and build something for ourselves. Now, that's a great responsibility. It's not an easy thing. Taking a black man who used to bang and slam, uh, didn't have no problem blowing his mother up. Didn't have no problem dealing destruction to his own people. Where you make another man or another woman, make a woman sell a body just to get high. Come on. Make a man steal from his own mom, go all up into her purse at night when she's sleeping. Is that right? It's not easy bringing a word to a black man and woman like that and causing them to see the gift of God in them as an individual and making them want to change. We can't make you do a damn thing. Submission willingly. Right. Yeah, well, there will come a time when the submission will be forced on you. When you want, not by me, not by us, but by God. God is going to force you and me to bow down. Huh? When you ask the bow,
Is that right? Yes, sir. A lot of our poor parents that were brought over here were Muslims. We can't convert you into being a Muslim. You're that by nature. That's your nature, to submit and be obedient to God. So brothers and sisters, this man that brings about the resurrection of the dead, the enemy does not like him. The enemy will leave no stone unturned to vilify that man. Huh? So when we hear the truth coming from that man and recognize who it is, we should stand with him. We should try to understand him That's right. and his message. That's right. At least we might not get out alive. That's right. Because America is under divine chastisement. Right. Right. Under divine judgment. And if you and I don't change, we're not going to get out alive. You say, well, man, I don't care. I don't care. I'm ready to die. But die for what? You don't have to die. You don't have to go out like that. Really, you don't. You don't have to go out like that. You can actually choose the way you want to die. By the way that you live your life. Now, standing up for the black man and woman, I don't mind dying for that. I don't mind giving my life. And there is a difference. There's a difference in giving your life and dying. To give your life means that you give your waking hours. You give your time. You give, yeah, you give your money to that which you give your life for. Is that right? And there's a difference than, than dying. Dying is when you put a period behind your life. You make a, a statement that is ended by a period which is death. Now what statement or what testament do we want to leave? How do you want to be remembered when you've gone out of here? You want them to just cry, have a good dinner at the house, and then, uh, you know, nobody remembers nothing about you? How do you want to be remembered? Baby, little Willie. He was just a good dope selling nigga. I mean, he, he did it twice. He did it like nobody else. But is that the way you want to be remembered? What legacy? What kind of legacy you want to leave your children? I want to be just like them. But Papa was a rolling stone. Huh? I want to be just like Mama. But Mama wasn't all together right. What kind of example are we leaving? Huh? And what should we be doing, brothers and sisters, to try to change our lives for the better? Brothers and sisters, we're waiting for Brother Minister Tony Muhammad to come. He'll be up in a few minutes. We just want you to relax. We wanted to raise questions for you and point out a few things about the nation of Islam and what we stand for because there are many of you who have never come to Muhammad Mas. There are many of you who uh, go for the media spin right. that has been on the nation of Islam and Minister Farrakhan, and you have decide, decided, for whatever reason, to come today to get an inside view, to come today to hear for yourself what it's all about. You see, hearsay is not good enough today. You got to be bold enough. Right. You must be courageous enough to come and get it for yourself. See, when you get it from somebody else, it's watered down. It's got a little bit of cut on. You know what I'm saying? And you know how you like it. You like it with nothing on it. Is that right? The bomb. Is that right? You want it straight. With no cut on. If you OD, you just OD. And that's what Brother Minister Tony is going to bring you today. The uncut, unadulterated truth from the mouth of Minister Farrakhan. We can't wait for you today.
Is that right? Yes, sir. Kill millions okay. of people. Right. Is that right? Yes, sir. But look, Japan bounced back. Right. Why? Right. They had a spirit yes, in their heart to do something for themselves. Right. Now look at Japan. Come on. Huh? Sony, Mitsubishi, yeah. Nissan. Yeah. Huh? Look at them. Come on. That didn't happen overnight. Right. That took work. That took dedication. That took commitment. Huh? The white man, David Crockett and Daniel Boone. Huh? Please trans to take this land from the Indians. Huh? Many of them died, but they also killed. Is that right? For what they believe. Yes, sir. Huh? For their own nation. Huh? But God came yes, sir. July 4th, 1930 and declared black people in America as the nation of Islam. A nation, a nation of peace, a nation of God. With a little G, G. With a little G. See, we, as the book says, the scriptures in Hebrews and in Psalms 82, says that ye are all gods, children of the Most High God. Mm -hmm. That means that the Most High God is a big G. And you and I, who are just getting up out of our graves, just found out who we was. How we gonna be a big G? <laughs> what have we produced? Nothing. Nothing, not a thing. So God says that yes, all y'all are gods, but y'all are little G's. You little G's. Now, what will determine our growth? Our production. What can we produce as a people? Well, first of all, we have to come together. Is that right? And begin to understand that without one another, we are nothing as an individual. You can get picked off one by one as an individual. If you don't have no army, you have nothing. Because whatever you produce can be taken from you. I see our beloved brother Mayor from Compton, California. Mayor up for a few words. But before I do, I just want to drive it in your mind that you are a nation. Right. And you and I must learn to work with one another, even if we have differences. Right. We're not going to all believe exactly the same way. But that doesn't mean that there cannot be uh, unity, even in diversity. Is that right? So brothers and sisters, God declared us to be a nation. We are that. Let us begin to start acting like brothers and sisters. And at this particular time, I'd like to bring before you a man who needs no introduction, who's making great strides in the city of Compton, California. Our esteemed mayor, the Honorable Omar Bradley. Please welcome him. standpoint that the deceiver has always sought to separate and divide. His basic game plan has not changed from one decade to the next. Set brother against brother, sister against sister, and father against son. And certainly here in the wilderness of North America, 
We were warned by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that the best weapon against the black man is the black man himself. For we are always and have always been the strongest soldiers on the planet Earth. However, now we're faced with a more technological approach to our own destruction. Not only have they come into our homes and begun to deceive us by setting wife against husband and daughter against brother, but now they're using the mass media yes, to magnify an attempt to put the East Coast against the West. Yes, we started off with Crips and Pyru. Yes. If you analyze the word Crip, as Minister Farrakhan has taught us, it means crippled mind. A person who is devoid of the understanding of himself. And if you spell pirate backwards and turn the U into a B, you get crip. So what they've done most intelligently to us, beloved, is to magnify their own Willie Lynch philosophy to the extent that one black man on the West Coast would hate another black man on the East Coast whom he has not even seen or met.
Assalamu alaikum. In the name of Allah, who came in the person of Master Farag Muhammad and his messenger, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and the extension of his work, Minister Farrakhan, I greet you in peace. Assalamu alaikum. Check this out. It ain't no East Coast, West Coast. That's the first thing. Second of all, I only got a few seconds, so I'm going to try to grab it as much as I can. I personally think that the East Coast, West Coast is a situation to undermine the efforts of the minister. Okay? Anytime you got a scenario where you got 2.6 million men in one area and there's not even a fight, then somebody's plotting and planning to destroy them. But, check this out. If he thinks that he's going to disrupt the progress and the elevation of black people, he's in for a rude awakening. You know why I say that? Because his brothers and sisters like myself that don't look like we're part of the nation, but we are an intricate part. You see? see, let me just set the record straight. First of all, rest in peace eternally to Pac Shakur when he met with me, my homie Mustafa, Bo, Snoop, the whole nine yards. He said one thing, y'all embraced them brothers from the East Coast. That's the last thing Pac said to me when he was alive. He said embrace them brothers because they need y'all's embracing. So when you come devil talking about East Coast, West Coast, remember the sun rises in the East and sets in the West. So therefore, if you plot and plan and then Allah also plan, and he's the best of plan. That's why in the Quran it says, when you see men entering the religion of Allah and company, celebrate the praises of your Lord. So what you see today is trips and bloods, man, woman, and child, the whole scenario entering, the only thing left for black people, and that's Islam. You see, you might see me doing one thing, but I'm doing something else on the other side. Because a wise man can play the part of a fool, but a fool can't play the part of a wise man. So I'm gonna tell you, brothers and sisters, on behalf of the Crips and Bloods, from the 10s to the 20s, from the 60s to the 90s, from the Bloods to the businessmen, we are united as one. If there's any killing that you see jumping off, it's the white man doing it or a nigga that worked for him. The nigga ain't with us. He went there. So if you kill black people, the same God that served oppressors for killing black people want to see you. Okay? Can we get that clear? So let's, let's just let the record know that in my personal and professional life, I've talked to every rapper there was. And from Dub C, Mac Wano, the brother Q, Snoop, Tupac, they all expressed their feelings for the black community and their feelings to stop this East Coast, West Coast stuff. Let me just let y'all know that. They ain't with it. They ain't never been with it. They're about to die. So brothers and sisters, with that, I'm going to tell you, if you don't take my advice, take this here. Islam is like fire. If you utilize it, it'll purify you. But if you play with it, it'll burn you up. of the community who is going to say some words. He heads up an organization. I don't know if he heads it up. He's definitely a part of what is called Unity One in South Central Los Angeles. Please welcome Brother Bo. Please bring him up. First, I want to give honor to God Almighty brought us all here together. I want to say to the Muslim community, Assalamu alaikum. To all the homies, what's up? And the people in the community. Before we get started, I want to ask everybody to, you know, give a few moments of silence for all the homies that's, that's lost their lives through senseless violence. For At least 30 seconds.
Amen. Uh, along with me today came some of those very individuals who've been working hard to try to spread love and peace throughout our community. Even though we've been targeted by the LAPD, last night some of y'all might have seen it, and this morning some of y'all might have seen it on TV, where our neighborhood, by Venice and the uh, we lost one of our loved ones last week. And because we were mourning over our homie, the police want to come through with a battery ram and, and, and all their gear to tell us that we can't do that. Well, there was a lot of problems with that. And uh, they finally put it on TV, which they shouldn't have done. And I think a lot of black people throughout the state will start waking up to what's really going on in this city. It ain't about red and, red and blue going against each other. It's these infiltrators trying to make us kill each other. So we can <laughs> Community One that came to step up, man, so everybody can see who we really are, man. All the homies from Unity One, stand up, man. These are the real soldiers, the brothers and sisters that you see, the family working, the justice and peace for our people. You know, it's kind of hard when you talk about peace, especially in the streets out here in this city. A lot of the homies didn't agree with it at first. A lot of people didn't think that it was going to happen. I didn't have people tell me that, man, you're crazy for trying to deal with them Negroes. Uh, forget them. Leave them. Just get yours. Get what you can get and get on. But uh, I ain't going to sell my people out like that. The one thing that we all got to remember I don't care how much celebrity status you get. To me, God is the only celebrity in my life. You know what I'm saying? We can play the game here on earth, but when we die, we're going to be held accountable for our actions and what we did in this life. When you die, you can have a Mercedes Benz, a big house, a nice car, all that. That's fine and dandy. But when you die, you can't take none of that with you. To anybody who feel like they're any better than any one of us that's out there in the neighborhood that's struggling, I can't feel sorry for what happened to those individuals because I see that every day in my neighborhood. I can't feel any more remorse for what happened to Biggie or Tupac because I see it every day. I just saw it yesterday. Them brothers' lives is important just like the homies' lives is important. Them is so One thing that we need more than anything in this world is we need unity amongst the ranks. All the sisters and brothers, especially the sisters and brothers that's on the welfare system right now, man, they getting ready to hurt us. They getting ready to hurt us. All you gotta do is turn the tube on. I don't even watch regular shows no more. All I watch is the news and world events. They getting ready to hurt us, man. They getting ready to implement their program. And if we ain't ready to have an economic base for our people and for these babies in here, man, all of us can care. <laughs> Proposition 209, a job that you got that's good to you and your family, in a minute you ain't going to have that job because they don't have to hire you because you're black no more. Yes, sir. So you're going to be forced to come back to the ghetto. Yes, sir. And when you come back, if you ain't been doing what you're supposed to do, the homies ain't finna accept it. If your records don't sell and your movies don't sell and you, and you happen to go broke one day, or you happen to get hooked on drugs and get broke, the homies ain't gonna accept you if you ain't been doing your job. But there's no doubt in my mind that God has his hands and his blessing upon all of us in Unity One and all the brothers in the nation, and all the brothers are sitting on this stage. That lets me know, in my heart, we just met yesterday on the radio station, 92.3 to B, and these brothers are here, and I'm gonna say, man, I'm glad y'all came, brother. It ain't about no talking and all that. It's about let's do it. Q, you want to the program, the plan, we got it. You know what I'm saying? We got it, homie. But I ain't with all this talking and all that, having to 
media all involved with our business, man. We just get out and do it like this. Everybody, I don't care. It's a bunch of grassroots organizations out there, and I don't want to take too much time. But we about to get our stuff together, man. All we need is some real soldiers, man, to stop playing with us. Man. We got all of y'all. Assalamu alaikum.
in this very history-making event. I'm just a soldier. I will be here and everything that I can do, everything that I can do, I'll be willing to do because I've always been a friend of the nation for the last 30 some years. Through the trials and tribulations, the minister and his family have been dear friends to me, always standing by me when I was in deep trouble at certain junctions of my life. I've always spoken out, I've always believed the truth. But without further ado, I would like to say I'm very happy to be here. The young men that I brought along are very happy to be here, and we're going to do everything that we can do to bring about freedom, equality, and justice for the black nation. Thank you. Jim Brown, let's give it up. Brothers and sisters, at this time, I'm anxiously awaiting, and I hope you are too, to hear from our brother, who is a tough brother, but he's a humble brother. He's a wise brother, but he has an ear to listen for you. He's a brother who loves our people. He's a brother as you can see today, that brings people together. He is the West Coast Regional Representative of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Our brother, our friend, our fighter, Brother Minister Tony Muhammad. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, who came to us in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, to whom praise is forever due. We thank God Almighty, the creator of all things, the revealer of all truth, to the sender of all the great prophets. We thank him for giving to us Moses and the Old Testament. We thank him for Jesus and the New Testament. We thank him for Muhammad and the Holy Quran. But I believe that I would be remiss in my view if we did not thank Almighty God enough. For as it is written in the Bible that we would be a people that would be taken out of our land, brought to a strange land. We've been serving certainly a strange people for over 400 years. Is that right? Yes, sir. But God loved us enough that he knew it was going to happen before it happened. That is the sign of a great leader. Great leaders are those who can perceive need before need is needed. But he said that he would love this people so much that he would not in the last day send no prophet after them. He said in the Bible, I, even I, will go after the lost sheep. He said, I will go after the rejected people. I will go after that man and woman that's on the bottom to place them on top but he did not tell us the mechanism by which he would use. We have to thank him for soldier of truth. We have to thank him for Harriet Tubman, is that right? We have to thank him for Marcus Garvey, my brother, man, that I've tried to pattern myself out of, in one sense, Nat Turner. But he didn't play with his hands. I thank God for Noble Jew Ali. I thank him for Denmark Beastie. I thank him for all of those who struggled on our behalf. I thank you for Dr. Martin Luther King. I thank you for Malcolm X. I thank you for Adam Clayton Powell and all of those who struggled so young little brothers like me can stand up on a truth and hurl truth at falsehood. I'm going to knock out falsehood. I have to thank Almighty God for a man that the whole world, in my humble opinion,
some of us have misunderstood this man. One thing about our enemy, that when one of our leaders is dead or is killed, it is only after their death that they allow you to study them. They even let their own children study them. But what is it about this Georgia-born black man called Elijah Muhammad? That even in what they consider his death, they won't even make a poster with his picture on They know that the very fast that he wears on his head is in your genetic memory. And if you take a look at that, he will make you look. That's what they know about Elijah. I thank God for that Georgia-born black man. He misunderstood black men. A black man that they say was uneducated, but yet he educated. Is that right? I thank God for him, and we would never back down from the teachings of the honorable boy like this. Never back down. I never met personally the honorable Elijah Muhammad. I was a little snotty nose brother running in the street with poop in my diaper, knowing nothing about Islam or Elijah. But I have to personally thank Almighty God for the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. It was when I heard the truth coming from his mouth that I took the drugs off my table and flushed them down the toilet. I thank God. Again, in my humble opinion, a man that God, I don't care what you think about him, that's one man you don't get to vote on. When God raised his man or his woman up, don't nobody get to vote. As long as God is backing that man, then the people who don't understand him in the beginning will understand him in the end. He has not waited for brothers and sisters. Brother Jim Brown can tell you he's the same way with a little bit more knowledge and a little bit more understanding as he was 30 years ago. He never sold you out. So why should we have a beef with Minister Farrakhan and you ain't never even talked to the man? He's never wronged us, is that right? So I lay down my life and will take some lies by that man. of Islam and those of us who are struggling in the city of Los Angeles trying to make our word our bond. I am grateful and eternally thankful for you, the real big giants, and for those who are on the podium with us today. I thank God because only God can do something like this. I don't think any of us as individuals should use the word, I, I did this, I know. God is at work with this. And we should humble ourselves that God is at work. I thank God for Brother Snoop Dogg. I thank God for Brother Ice Cube. He's in the house today. His word is his body. He's getting to be here. I thank God for Matt Tim, for Brother Cam, for Jim Brown, for Brother Omar. He ain't just a male. This man is a soldier. Most politicians be faking and quaking and little punk type people. This man is a warrior for God. Not only do he master politics and got a few tricks of his own, but he'll get real with you, put the gloves on, and box with the enemy. So I thank God for this brother. I thank God for Brother Bo in a group that God bless him to organize called Unity One. What a beautiful name. Because God is one, is that right? And God wants unity. So if all of us fall in unity with the oneness of God, we all a member of unity one. I got my membership. I don't know about you. And to the general, Brother Malik, brother was on Fox. You know Brother Malik dropped wisdom everywhere he go. Fox kicked him out when they realized who he was. But he's always been a general in the street, moving in the highways and the byways, running at truth and falsehood. And I thank God for that, brother, Brother Malik. He was he helped us to bring Snoop Dogg to the table. I thank my sister who's here, Sister Melba Jackson, this black lady sitting right here, a corporate sister working with Shell. She have a program training high school youth on how to become entrepreneurs. She ain't talking. She need our support, and she's here. I thank God for her. I thank God for Brother Matt Tim. All of these names are so 
beautiful and connected with God because God is 10. Here we are as a people in America representing zero, doing nothing. But when the oneness of God came to America in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, he took zero and stood behind it and made it 10. So we got Mac 10 in the house. That means we got his ex. We thank God for the West Side connection. I mean, these brothers are giants, and I'm telling you, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan said, brother, when these brothers turn on the real lyrics and point them at the enemy in self first, and when self is corrected, then you take and point your guns at your open enemy. He said, then the White House is going to start shaking. Those big multi-millionaire white folks are going to start shaking because they see the dry bone in the valley and ready to live. I thank you all, brothers. I'm humbled by your presence. Brother Jabari, who's here, Brother Dominic, who's here, they called the first press conference. And we went over to Chip Murray's church, and these brothers were just don't know nobody, but in their heart, they just made the call and people came. That's Brother Jabari and Brother Dominique there on the back row. We thank God for this. And I thank Brother Dominique enough about Brother Jim Brown. All of us. And he don't like to take that for himself, but we have to tell people about themselves when they live, because once they die and go on the they can't hear us. This brother has been in the struggle for a long time. When I came to the city, I went to brother. So I'm just a young brother. I need your help. I need your guidance, man. Is it all right that I do some work in Los Angeles? I went to everybody who was a leader, whether they was known or not known, and asked permission if I could come in the city of Los Angeles and do some work. We didn't even know we was from Georgia. He's my home boy. I was, I'm telling you, brother, in his program, America, I like that name, America, because I can what? I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. America. I can unite the black man and bring us into the oneness of God. I can correct myself so that I can begin to correct others. I'm going to be with Brother Jim Brown while he's living, and maybe he might outlive me, but I'll be there if he's dead, lifting this brother's name. Let's give Brother Jim Brown. Again, Brother Ice Cube. I mean, these are names, brother, that are so awesome. Ice and Cube. God said that he would find his chosen people. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said he will give us enough wisdom in a book called Supreme Wisdom. And when you master that, then we will begin to cube the earth. <laughs> huh? But when we see our enemy, we got to be cold as ice. But when we see the black man crying, we got to be cold. He stood up and said, I said, Look, man, we got a lot of problems we got to settle with ourselves. But it ain't not one problem we got that we can't settle. It ain't one problem that we have with one another. Our problem should be bigger with the white man. We all are ignorant, we all make mistakes. Is that right? Yes, sir. I thank God for brothers like Brother Cam and brothers like Brother Tyrone. These are rap lyricists who are all in the nation trying to work to uplift our people. And with the help of God, we're going to settle all of these differences today. So my subject today is, what time is it? It's nation time. Yeah, I'm a male and female. 
charge you to go against your own people, then you become isolated. They, man, they're up in the rooms, but they hate this meeting. So they know far to the know. God is feeding him, and he can look into the scripture and look right into the mind of the white man. Some of you black niggas with white faces. Excuse me for using the word nigga, but if you like that, that's exactly what you are. That's a nigga, 1997. Anyway, I got to finish this. He said, brother, they are trying to take the rap culture and do with the rap culture what they was not able to do with crack cocaine when they put that in the community. They are doing genocides on every level. Genocide in the grocery store. You got your children on fast food, you're dying fast. You run into the store just because you're lazy to get some real taters. We call them taters in Georgia. That's some Ebonics for you. You go and get pots of potatoes and add water with it, and your children ain't eating taters, they ain't chemicals. He said that what they're trying to do is cause beef between the East and West. That's not what it is. What they want to do is set up the people on death row, set up the people from Bad Boy Entertainment, act like that's some beef with each other, and then kill him himself. Because he wants the black gold. Then everybody who wanted to be down with West Side Connection, everybody that want to be down with Bad Boy, everybody that want to be down with death row, these brothers who are not been discovered and sisters who haven't been discovered, they was thinking about going with a black company, now they scared. So they run right back to the white man and become a volunteer slave. Y'all don't hear me, y'all. I said, my God. He said, so you tell them that, man. But don't go up in these boardrooms. Don't go to the record label. We know that our people have been reduced to nothing. Yeah, we like Phil. And every black man I've ever met, when I meet a drunk in the street, when I look at him and start telling him, man, you know you God? He drunk, says, what did you just say? I said, you're a God, man. You the original man. Say that again, you the original man. Stand up. He stands up. Because the word went out, man. They want to hear a word. When rap music first started, we were going after the white man with our music. Don't, 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 don't believe the hype. Is that right? They heard too. They thought maybe it was just a fad. They didn't know God was behind rap music. God was aiming the cannons. But he said that in the last day, Brother Tony, the Bible, it is written in this book if you understand it. There are dry bones in a valley in the book of Ezekiel. And the, God, the dry bones was complaining. They were saying that we will never come together. We will never be united. Then Ezekiel went to God and God asked him, can these bones live? Ezekiel said, only you know God. Then he told him, he gave him an order. He said, prophesy to the wind. He went and spoke to the wind. The wind don't mean wind that blow. The wind means then change what they're saying. Let me bring some chastisement on the bones. Then the wind start coming on the dry bones in the valley. Do you think God is interested in a bone? The bones is a symbol of something that used to exist and have energy, have flesh, and it used to move the right way. We are the dry bones that the book of Ezekiel is talking about. The black man in America, we the dry bones. Here we are, the spiritual and mental remains of a once great people. How did we come from pyramid builders to project dwellers? 
How did you come from the mother of civilization and now be portrayed as the biggest whore on the planet? How did you become Abu Ha, the father of everything that moved, and now you ain't nothing but a cheap dope dealer, womanizer? You can't get past your penis. Allah has 
to raise some of us above the rest to be an example. He said that Biggie and Tupac was actually raised in the East, but they died in the West. That's a sign of us. They came and got us out of the East, brought us to the West, took our name, took our language, took our God, and we became spiritually dead. He said, but right now, you have a valley of decision. Since they was brought up in the East and killed in the West, let's take their blood and use it as fertilizer. Because the Honorable Louis Farquhar said, brother, the type of man and woman that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is God is looking for is going to come up at the West Coast first. Because it's considered the worst coast. And God worked on the worst part first. So these powerful brothers and sisters can help in the resurrection process. Yeah, drop a little gates down there, but drop some truth. He said, and then we can take Tupac's life as an example. We can take our brother uh, Biggie's life as an example because it's not by coincidence that they died right at the point of bringing out an album. But look at what the white man wanted to put out there. Was the album talking about life or was it talking about death? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. He said a white man want us to believe that there is no hope, so all of us were going to be satisfied with death. To help do us up. Life after death. Did you not know there is no life after death? Not after physical death, that's life, that's life after mental and spiritual death. You can't find me no person who physically died and then came back. <laughs> Prove it with science. Got you wanting to die, and I wait, die, die, and I'll go to get mine. Get what? <laughs> While you living on the earth, you're either in heaven or you're either, either in hell. Either your thinking is heavenly or your thinking is talking about hell. What time is it? It's nation time. He said, but take the examples now. He said, all the entertainers can hold their life up and look at it. If I keep teaching this, will that get to my door? It's the beat, man. These brothers got some of the baddest track. See, I came up in the funk era. I was a funk of tear. I love me some polymers, man. I used to listen to W-E-B-L-A-C-K, We Black. Doing it till you're in your ear trunk. Just lay your body on the radio and let the eyes flow through. Folk not only move, but it can remove. Rap can do the same thing. It can move and remove. You can move with the beat. And it can remove ignorance. They died in the West because God is present in the West. He said, why do you think so many mountains is in the West? Our earth spins at 1,037 and a third mile per hour. Set up on a law. That whenever you want something to rotate and have balance, when your tides get unbalanced, the white man have to find a trouble spot. When he finds a trouble spot in your tire, he takes a weight with whip and height and put it on the trouble spot. Then the tire rolls real smooth. That's why the earth is turning, but we're in the west where mountains are. Not only is it a physical trouble spot, but for every physical reaction, there's a spiritual and mental reaction. The white men have black people who didn't want slavery, so we took off running westward by them. We didn't want to bow down, so we went west with that. When we got to the west, we ran all the way to the shore, and we see the Pacific Ocean. Not knowing that the Pacific Ocean was 68,334,000 square miles. Nigga can't swim that long. <laughs> we were rebelling against the white man, so we came to the west as rebels against our oppressor. Having nowhere to go, so we set up roots in the west. Oh man, this thing is powerful. If you knew this book, you 
wake up overnight, you ain't got to be no punk to be righteous. Tell you straight up. So we set up in the West. So the white man, he always been looking to us to see where his trouble spot was. He said, but brother, you tell the West Coast rappers, they got right now the most influence. Brother, they always do that. Me and Bo was talking the other day. I was 
ten and four. How they'll take brothers from the Unity One. Put Unity One t-shirt on them. The brothers will be out there selling final call. A brother pull up in the car. F them, F them. I don't want that. But the FOI, not having enough experience, he see on the shirt, Unity One, run back to the mosque. And the brothers from Unity One tripping. Some of the enemies put on bow tie. Y'all see a brother out in the club shaking, smoking dope. I need to blame the whole nation. Brother in a bow tie out there set trip. Got war going on between the blood. That nigga ain't no Muslim. He in the nation kill him. He's an angel. Somebody come to you with something negative about somebody else, Minister Barker said, look into what they say. Then call the person who they talking about and say, Brother Q, check this out. A Snoop, check this out. Mac 10, check this out. Look, man, folks from Vibe Magazine said that you said, I didn't say that, bro. Then you should go after the chunk that said it. They lying, man, because you brothers are having a marginal amount of success in those of us in the street. We're not spiritually and morally and mentally correct. We get envious. Because we don't see you no more. You don't come back to the corners no more. That ain't what it's about. A brother asked me, what is Dennis the fire kind going to do about this? What do you mean? He's been teaching for 40 years. Said there will come a day that God will raise up an army, and He's raising that army a day to be non-compromising. Some in bow ties, some in t-shirts, some in blouse, some in miniskirts, who don't want to hit that negative no more. And then that angel, the help angels, gonna start moving. That's what I used to do. The nation of Islam, we are coming into the entertainment business. We're going to be at the table with the deals, man. No, nah, no, nah, don't sign that, man. Come on, white man. Put some more damn zeros on that. <laughs> we do do that. You can't be running around as an entertainer in the posse that's rolling with you talking about they protecting you and smoking clock. <laughs> yeah, my nigga. I'm with you, man. You know, anything happens. That ain't security. That nigga in your pocket. Getting high. Talk about he on security. Then when bullets come, he see eight guns and one for one. End up shooting you. Oh, damn, kill Damn, Snoop. No. You better call some real backup. We're gonna train with you in the one. We're gonna train with America. We're gonna build an army of brothers and sisters. And anybody who wanna be right, are you gonna get that way overnight? No, I don't even put that kind of pressure on me, brother. Ain't nobody put it on you. That's why Allah said in the Quran, seek assistance to Allah through patience and prayer. Be patient while they try to get their thing together. If they stop doing what they're doing now, they make it eight million. Can you give them eight million a year? Or you just wanted to be broke like you? So then you can say, yo, man, y'all down now, man. <laughs> no. But attach your wealth, brothers, to programs that you know for. That's all. Be it the nation of Islam. Be it Unity One, be it America, be it what our man Omar Brad is doing, attach your wealth to something. Because whatever you send out, that's what's going to come back. If you don't share, and your wealth ain't got to be money. Knowledge, man. Look, brother, I don't, I've made milk, but I don't want to take another man's money and make it unless I'm paying it back. Give me a loan. Be, do a joint venture with me. But don't be no beggar. Going up to these entertainers, if you got five dollars, hell no. I got 
got some knowledge. I got to look. I don't want no tell me religion. I don't want no tell me education. I want to show me religion. I want to show me education. So if the brothers are out there slinging drugs, I know God is going to bless me to get a thing. So if a brother is slinging drugs and he's driving a BMW, I'm a man of God. I got to outthink the devil. I got to now go and get me a Mercedes B and that's three blocks long. Pull up next to the brother who got a BMW. Say, nigga, get your car, put it in the trunk, and get your money. <laughs> that's the then he will ask you the question, how you get that? I didn't get it smoking dope. I didn't get it chasing women, and I damn sure don't chase no men. Let me tell you about this God. I got a lot of understanding of That's the kind of education. If you come with anything other than that, man, you fake it. People sitting out talking down on these brothers. No, you get your butt down and talk up to them. The minister said, feed them with wisdom. If they choose to reject it, that's fine. You'll get a visit. If you choose to accept it, you're still going to get a visit. Because somebody ain't going to like it. You got to either choose to be with the black nation or go on and get with the white men. But when the war of Armageddon started, we ain't gonna have no mercy. I'm taking everybody here that's wearing red, white, and blue. Y'all all right? So I am humble, brothers and sisters, at this moment. And you should run back out in the community saying it was death. Any brothers who out there set trip to tell them, hold up. I think they're going to get it together. But as leaders, if we're going to be that, I don't like that word. I like to serve. I like to serve the real leaders. You the leader. I like to bring you a glass of water. I'd love to serve you some food. You the real leader. And I said to the brothers and sisters today, Treat these brothers who are coming and sisters that are coming just like we treat that dope dealer or just like we treat that drunk that walk through the door. When you're drunk and walk in the mosque, we treat that brother like he fire coming. When a sister who was out prostituting walk through the door, we treat her like she's Sister Khadija. So if we handle the little man right, it's easy to handle the stars. Because we've been practicing with all stars. Come on, man. That's what time it is. When we unite, the ministry is on his way. 27 years ago, approximately, the white man came against us in Los Angeles. Brother Jim Brown knew about it. Then the entertainers did watch that. They went and got the uh, stadium, the Coliseum. We getting ready to call 100,000 men and women march to the Coliseum. Let these brothers go in the studio and let them come out and drop the lyrics about peace, selling the different, keep the gangster rap up, but turn it on the enemy itself. Talk about that devil that's an enemy in your own mind. Talk about jealousy. Talk about all of the lifestyles of irrepute that plague us, and then we'll turn our guns on the opening. If you got a black face and a white mind, and you're against the liberation of black people, you might. That's right. If you are a politician and you go into the White House eating chicken and biscuits and you don't come back and tell us what that cracker said, you might. Right. If you the police and you want to show the white man that you hate us more than he do and beat us, nigga, you might. Right. If you don't set up a program on paper, talking about you got a program that help people and it's on paper, but you ain't helping nobody, nigga, you my enemy. <laughs> Your program better be helping somebody. We going to look at all black programs. I don't want nobody tying me to no Democrat or Republican. Tying me to the unity so that we all can be one. So I thank God for you listening to these words. I'm going to give my life for the unity of the rap community. Minister Farcom is getting ready to do something with our brothers to try to help. They can either accept it or reject it.
but not just them. There are millionaires that are in this audience today. I'm not going to tell you who they are, because I know some of you be running. I don't want to borrow some money. <laughs> you know you will. You sitting down now with your tape in your hand, ready to give it to one of these brothers. Yo, man, check this out, man. Come on, see this one Hold up with all that. <laughs> but there are millionaires that are black that are here today. They got bank. If the brothers are serious about distribution, let's break. And these black millionaires, they not no millionaire punks. These are millionaire revolutionaries. <laughs> they in the audience. I'm not going to point out. Because I told them I wouldn't tell who they were. Because I know us. And then the agents that are here, I know they're going to run back to the white man. But trust us on this. We are getting ready to raise up a nation. You will see. Unity one. Mary I can. Nation of Islam, the Panthers, and the Rappers. The minister told us, everywhere they go, brother, I want protection around. Them. Yes, sir. We hear and obey. You don't have to condemn them if they dirty. We just gonna place a clean glass beside them. And they will decide one day, I'm going to drink from the clean glass. Don't let the white man trick you with these contracts, man. Don't let money become your God, but master the money, and you become the God over money. Take your money, man. Look, you see this mob, they still got Spanish. We ain't got nothing against Spanish. But don't nobody help the nation, not on no big scale. Everybody is scared. But now that it's time to go to war, they know we got an army. If Q want to build a restaurant in South Central, we'll protect it. If Jim Brown want to build a restaurant in South Central, we'll protect it. If you want to set up a manufacturing and distribution, hell, we'll have thousands of FOI protecting it, killing anything that ain't right that's inside. Yes, sir. It's time for wisdom and wealth to matter. So, brothers, go shout to the community that these brothers are going to settle their difference. We ain't going to tell you who got no beef. It ain't your damn business. But the beef will be settled. I know Bo is going to sit with me, Jim. Then we're all going to fly and go see the leaders. And then we're going to get our marching orders. And when we come back to the community, we will build it. We right now have purchased this whole city block. If we don't come out, wait up. This building right now holds about 2,000 people. Anytime y'all want to put on a concert, we do it right here. Come on. Ain't nobody coming up in here set tripping at all. No gun will get you that good. You can get in here and groove how you want to groove, shape how you want to shape. Let the funk move you, but let the lyrics remove ignorance. Come on in here and make money. We'll fill it up with 2,000 people. Make $20,000 for yourself. Drop 15 to the mob. Right. And we got to get out of the right. But look, brother, I would like to, with the help of Jim and Bo, and there's others, we need to do something big right in the Coliseum. And then in New York, the same day, they need to be in Shea State. Yes, sir. Then all of us in the West would turn to the ones in the East. Every lyric would be talking peace and who the real enemy is. So when we're shouting over the West to the East, they shout back. Then the people in the middle, they would stand up and say, Oh, man, they calling us to the army, man. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Here. Brother Bobcat is here, one of the big producers out here. Where is Bobcat? Here he is, right here. Here's Brother Bobcat. Right here. So, brothers and sisters, thank you for coming out to this rally. And the rally was meant to pick your spirits up, to show you that with the help of brothers like the General Malik in the street, disguised but dropping truth. 
get a little dirt on him every now and then if he's still dropping the truth. Can't none of us be a judge of nobody. All right. I'm going to help this sister, Sister Mel. She's forcing shell oil. Hell, they're getting our money. We're going to start our own gas, man. Should be on, man. Cam gas station, ice cube stop. So we got to start making this money. Now, we going to every Korean with 100 brothers knocking on their door. I don't, know, I don't know how they say he's down to you in Chinese, but I'm going to go in there and touch Chinese. <laughs> Look, man, we're not here your enemy. You are our yellow brother, but you're making money in our community. That's right. We want to know what you give. We want to 5,000 of their businesses in our community. Right. Will you give $200 a month to you and your one? America can, all the nation. No, we no can't do. No problem. We're going to line the bloods, crips, the nation of Islam, you know what? America, we're going to line up in front of their businesses, shut them down. I got my beret. I just had to wear my FOI cap 
to do. But when I go to their meeting, I got on my beret. I got me a Unity One t-shirt when they have their meeting. I'm already with Jim Brown in America. I'm training off of his mouth. I'm with all that. You ain't gonna divide me with no damn title. I'm a Christian. I've been crystallized into the oneness of God by following the examples of Jesus. I'm a Hebrew. I used to be a nigga who was ignorant. I done walked over to light now and now I can see. I'm a Catholic, meaning I'm universal. I say the one what I say to anybody. I'm a Methodist. I use all the methods and means of God and his prophets and leaders to get my feet. Thank you. 
Well, let me thank you for this love. Go this way, brother. Brothers, please hold up. If any of the entertainers want to have anything to say, we want them if they wish to. We ain't putting no pressure. Only if they wish to have a few words, I want to give them that opportunity. But I had to shake these giants' hands. Thank you, brother. Go right that way there. Take care of you. Go ahead, black man. Thank you. Please take them to the back and fill out the card. Thank you, dear brother. Go right this way. Thank you so well. Thank you, my brother. Well, our house is your house. Thank you, dear brother. Thank you, soldier. Come on, black man and woman. Y'all can give him a hand. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Hello, what for? Thank you, soldier. Good to see you, brother. Thank you, dear brother. Well, welcome, dear brother. Come on, give a hand to the army of God. Oh, thank you, soldier. Welcome. How you doing, my brother? Welcome, black man. Hello, what's up? Oh, man, that was a good grip, brother. I almost broke my head. I like that. Welcome, you, brother. Welcome, soldier. Welcome, you, brother. Thank you, brother. Welcome to the nation of Islam. Brothers and sisters, yeah. do we accept these black men and women? Yes, sir. Muslims, do we accept them? Yes, sir. Will you teach them everything you know? Yes, sir. If you had a bowl of bean soup and they needed some, how much could they get? Yeah. Welcome to the Nation of Islam. Give them another round of applause. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, we have with us today MC Red. And the Booyah, I like this, the Booyah tribe, where's the Booyah tribe? Man, you gonna make me go get my small on. Like you used to say down south, I got a little spring. <laughs> we have uh, we have J. Rowe and the alcoholic rap group. Right. Where they at, man? Ain't nothing wrong with a little alcohol that takes out drugs. <laughs> Bro, the security group. <laughs> Oh man, my brother, my partner, my friend. I mean, this is the brother who take on all the Rodney King type trial and go after the enemy with law truth. This is a brother that every, any of you that's having problems. This is one black man that I know won't sell y'all as a law. I'm talking about our brother, the revolution area, a man that loves his people, brother, an attorney, Milton Grimes, he's here. He's right there at Sheriff Lake's law. Keep him around in the club. Come on, man. Look, he saw Sheriff get sold out by his own attorneys. Yes. See, some of you who think the white man got, yo, my nigga, you get in trouble, get you a Jew lawyer. Okay, right. You think they're your friend, huh? Then, first thing the Jew lawyer tell you, look, I need to sub out some work. He already called his friend and said, got a nigga here. Let's get paid. I got to get me seven other lawyers. All of them getting a million apiece. And the longer the appeal go, the more money they get. They've already went and made a deal with the judge. So the judge and the lawyers sitting, you trying to stand on your square, and they know you ain't got no knowledge. So they take your money. Not this one. So if you need an attorney, he's one black man I know that'll help you. But you gotta pay for his services now. Service don't come free. So brothers and sisters, we get to a part of our program where I'm gonna ask you for help. As I've said to you, from the corner for the first time in the history of the nation of Islam, we have the opportunity to buy up a whole city block. 
Y'all know they raided our mosque when we had a dispute with our tenant. We got kicked out and we was out in the wilderness for about four months. But the Muslims, we persevered, is that right? Yes, we put our nickels and quarters and dimes together. Yes, sir. And we was able to purchase this theater, which won't be the mosque. Right. It will serve as the mosque temporarily. It will become the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's Performing Arts Center, where we will put on plays and concerts. This mosque and building, we want it to be the Apollo Theater of the West. So when Q got new talent on his label, you showcase them right here. Mac 10, Booyah, come on in here and do the Booyah on the white man, right in here. We won't charge you them outrageous fees. Just give us a little something, something. And we'll do the security. We'll be the ushers. We'll do the sound and lighting and the stage. Take that money and give it to another black man. I need your help to help us make this a reality. We are trying to purchase this building and block and renovate it. It's going to cost us about $750,000. I'm going to ask the Muslims. I want you to be the first to donate. Let's show our company how we do it how we love what we're trying to do. And every week you come, you're going to see something different. Right next door, we're building a brand new school called Muhammad's University. Yes, sir. In that school, we're going to take three-year-old babies and teach them physics, teach them trigonometry. By the time they get to be six years old, they're going to already know what career they want to go into. Yes, we're going to go from K to 12. If you can't teach your child, we're saying, bring him to high school. Your daughter giving you trouble, bring him to the MUI. Is that right? Yes, sir. Then up under the MUI, we're going to build a dry cleaners. We're going to build a bookstore. We're going to build a supermarket right here on this corner. Yes, sir. But it's going to take money to do that. Then next door on our left, we're going to build an abundant life clinic where we're going to help brothers get off drugs, brothers and sisters. Yes, we're going to work with AIDS patients that are black and brown, and red, and yellow. We have Brother Norm Anderson from Death Row. Where's Brother Norm Anderson? He's here. Norris, Brother Norris with Death Row. Come on, get, come on, get a black man around in the club. We also have with us condolences for the Davis family. This is the family, the brother we buried. You know, we want to really send out a shout out to the family. And we heard about the police and that little skirmish over there with they coming in with the army. See, this is why we got to have radio communication. So when the white man call out his troop, call them out. I know right now we can break them off with about 400 FOI. Is that right, FOI? Will we go and help our people? Call us, man. Also, we have our brother, is it Shiloh or Shallow? Sister. Sister, where's Sister Shiloh? Where's she at? Come on, this is Sister Shiloh. Give her a round of applause. Thank you, Black Thank you. Thank you. Come on, Muslim. You can give a sister a round of applause. That's the mother of Sister Black. Look, let's also give a hand to that brother and everything about him, he operate on three. The three represents the W, which is the West. He got three plaques on his chin. That's the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. But he called himself Brother WC with the West Side Connection. Give him a round of applause. Thank you, brother, for doing That's what I'm talking about. Look, we got an army in the music industry and one in the street. So, brothers and sisters, let's continue. There's a BMW that is black. Somebody talking about touring it, I think. Uh, Brother Captain, go out there and let the police know we policing this. They not gonna tow nothing. So, these cars, they talking about touring, go handle that. If we have to move it, just pick it up. 
Y'all ain't towing nothing. They ain't running this. Way. We in here now. Yes, sir. Um, police. Now, brothers and sisters, we're going to do this real quick. Is there anybody here that would like to help us to rebuild this block, which we will call the Peace Zone? We want to put up palm trees and dedicate the palm trees to all the dead soldiers from Bloods and Crips that have gone on to the next life. Those trees will be a symbol of their life because one thing about a tree, most of the time they'll be here long after we're gone. Is there anybody who want to start out with $1,000 or more? Is there anybody who would like to start out with $1,000 or more? Hold patience, we're coming to your number. Is there anybody here? $1,000 donation or more. Is there anybody who would like to give $500 or more? Is there any $500 donators or more? Yes, sir. How much? Let's give a hand. Brother Cam. Down no Brother Cam. He's giving $1,000. Give him a round of applause. Thank you, Brother Cam. Brother Cam is also one of the top rappers in the nation and out there trying to drop the lyrics. So I think you got an album coming out soon. So, brother, we thank you for your kind contribution. Is there anybody else with $500 or more that will help us to rebuild this mosque so that we can rededicate it for the upliftment of our people? Anybody else with $500 or more? Is there anybody with $200 or more? Is there anybody with $200 or more? I'll give $200. You can give me a round of applause for my $200. I'll give my two. Right now, we're going to get all new chairs. And the chairs are going to cost $300. Do the chair cost $300? No. But for everybody who purchases a $300 chair, your name will be put on the back of that chair as a donator. So anybody that would like to give $300 to go towards a chair that we will put in this edifice, please, you can give it toward that effort too. Yes, ma'am, somebody all the way up in the back. Brother, Dr. Who? Maxie, where, where's his office? We got to go to that doctor. Let's give Brother Dr. Maxie a hand. He gives $200. Thank you, dear brother, for that $200 donation. Is there anybody else in front of me or behind me? Yes, sir. You will match my $200. Well, then I'm going to raise you two. Then I'm going to raise you two. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give Attorney Milton Grimes a hand. He gives a kind donation of $200. <laughs> what a good job, right? Brothers and sisters. With same connection, they give two thousand dollars. Come on, black man, we to give them a round of applause. Two thousand dollars from the West Side Connection. Thank you, brother. Thank you all so very, very much. We appreciate that. Your money, one going thing. We gonna take that money. We gonna buy up all of Vermont. Vermont's gonna be. The Beverly Hills of the black community. We don't put palm trees all up and down the street. We pick it up all the paper. We don't pick up the trunk, bring them in the mosque, clean them up, and then present it back to the people, a well-made man and a well-made woman. Anybody else got $200 or more? Anybody else got $200 or more? Now, I saw somebody, baby, raise their hand. Be very, very careful. We'll charge your parents. <laughs> somebody behind me? Yes, sir. Let's give Brother Steve Brooks, one of our black entrepreneurs in the community. He gives $200 donation. Beautiful. Brothers, they did come and say that to me again. What did they do now? <laughs> you know what I'm going to show. Oh, 
Brothers and sisters, is it okay to say that? The brothers of Green Hills? <laughs> okay, I just want to make sure, you know. Brothers and sisters, we want you all to know that we know that there's certain things that you hear in the street about beef between people. But our brother Q is here, and brother Solo is here. They, from where I've just been told, ain't no beef. Am I right? Ain't no beef.
There is a black BMW and a white Chevrolet Cavalier. A brother is trying to, a brother who was in this meeting is trying to leave. So it is the captain regulating. So anybody that's got a black BMW or a white Chevrolet, you don't have to move it, just hold your key up. One of them, oh, I'll move it for you. We won't steal it. We might drive around the block a few times, but we ain't gonna steal it. Is there anybody here that got your ATM card? You got an ATM card, we'll take that white Mercedes Benz and we'll take it to the ATM card. You get it, right? On the way there, we'll play a little West Side music on the way. Then, what's the name of what? Damn, now you're trying to get me to do a commercial. I tell you what, y'all know how we normally do it. If we take it to the ATM machine, on the way there, we're going to play a little OJ's music called Money, Money, Money. Then on the way back, we'll play the song what? Stairways to Heaven. So we'll suffice it with that. Is there anybody else want to give $200 or more? We got to get out of here. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Dr. Alonzo Muhammad, $250. Give Dr. Alonzo Muhammad a hand. Dr. Randall W. Maxi pledged $200. Give him a hand. Brother Russell. Brother Russell Simmons could not be here. Snoop could not be here, but Snoop told me to make sure that I said to the brothers who are sitting here, I spent hours with Snoop doing some things that Brother Malik had already dropped the seeds on. But it's going to be a major announcement in a few days. Yes, sir, sir. But Brother Snoop, we just teaching and proving together. Ain't trying to take nothing out of his pocket, but just trying to make sure he get a word. But he wanted me to tell you, he had a business appointment, but he going to get to the miles soon, and he supports everything that's here. Let's send a shout out to Brother Snoop Dogg. He wanted to be here for the tour. Also, Brother Malik from the street, working with Russell Simmons. Russell Simmons wanted to be here, but Russell Simmons didn't send him out, but said he pledged that everything that he had in his arsenal, he pledged to help us, the nation of Islam, make it happen. That's brother Russell Simmons with their comedy jam. God is at work today. Is there anybody else for $200 or more? Also, we want every brother who is called a blood or a crib to stand. Brother Bull wanted me to do that. We want all the brothers that are called Blood and Crip come down front. Please, brothers, come down front. Come on, Muslim. Team the place with your God. Come on, let's go. Thank you. Let's go. 
he gives $100 gift of a year to start working around the watch out. Sister Melba, please, come sister. Brothers and sisters, this is Sister Melba. On a download, she's been introducing me to some very economically powerful people. She and I have been meeting. I ain't been telling you about it because I don't know who's who and what's what. And I promise that one thing I won't do is try to use people. Whether they give us money or give it to us or not, we, gonna, we believe in our God. Is that right? But she had an academy at the corner of Western and Manchester. Shell Academy where she takes the black and the brown and she re-educate them into entrepreneurship, teaching them how to use computers, how to go on interviews. I want all of you, all the entertainers, go by and check out what she's doing. I believe you'll be impressed. All the Muslims, go check her out. She's an educator. She's a sister, but she's a soldier. She's a female, but a fighter. She's a woman, but she's a warrior. Is your son here? Where's your son? He's a rapper too. Where is he? That's, this is, come here, brother. I think he just signed a contract with a major record label. Is that right, brother? Well, we want to look over your contract, make sure the white man gave you enough money. But let's give Sister Melba a round of applause. This, that's her stuff. Brother, you stand up here with the rest of them. Shake everybody's hand. Anybody else with $100 or more? Sister Melba? Let's give. Sister Melba gives $100 donation. Give her a round of applause. $100. We have the Anonymous family give $100. Give a hand to the Anonymous family, $100. Where is he? Where's Brother KD? Where's Brother KD? Let's give Brother, come on up Brother KD and take your place among the stars, brother. He's another one of the brothers out of the rap community. Come on, you can do that. Now get a man around on the clock. Anyone else, $100 or more? $100 or more. You'll be finished soon. Yes, sir. Run down here, brother. I can't hear you. Yeah, you can hear me. Yeah, we are, we, we acknowledge Brother Bilal. Anybody else with $100? Brother John Muhammad, $100. Let's give a hand. Brother John Muhammad, $100. Thank you, Brother John. Anybody else with $100? An anonymous one hundred dollars from the public side. Give the anonymous family. Anybody else with one hundred dollars? One hundred dollars or more. Anybody else with one hundred dollars or more? Anybody from the rap community, whether you're known or unknown, come on up to the stage. Matters not. All you just want to be a rapper now, and I know my son gonna come running up here now. Anybody else? Who else got $100? How about $50 or more? Are there any $50 donations? Anybody here have $50 or more? We need your help, brothers and sisters. I'm not, we do this every Sunday, so it ain't no hype because the entertainers are here. We do this every Sunday. We try to buy up this whole block. It's gonna cost us about $2 million. And when we buy it up, it's for you. Yes. Sister, is it Sheila or Sheila?